Okay, so we're going to discuss the posterior scapular approach if you have a scapular fracture, a glenoid fracture. So uh, these are the indications. We talked about them in the lecture. You want to go the posterior approach and you can reach the lateral border or if you want to do a posterior bone block. If you have an insta posterior instability, the glenoid, there is a posterior bone loss, just like we do a lateral J in the front or anterior bone block, you can do the same posteriorly from this approach. Now, this is a case example. What do you think the indication is for surgery here? And this one. Remember we talked about indication. Yeah, the intraarticular fracture, the angulation, right? More than 40 degrees, these are the indications. All right, let's move on. And these are the plates. Steps, first of all, you have to position the patient properly, skin dissection, the nervous planes we're going to talk about between the deltoid and the uh, infraspinatus and then the infraspinatus and teres mine. So this is the anatomy which is very important. Lizard okay. okay. So once we reflect the deltoid, we mentioned in the lecture you don't have to, but again, because we are in a cadaver lab, we are still practicing, we're going to do a large incision. Be very generous with your incision. And we're going to reflect the deltoid so we have a nice view of the area we want. Now, we know, okay, so we know from the anatomy we have the infraspinatus, we have the teres minor, the teres major, we have the long head of triceps, and this is creating the quadrangular space in which the axillary and the circumflex come out. And then we have this triangular space and this triangular space which also have relevant anatomy. This is it. So we have the radial nerve coming out of this. We might not see it now. We will see it in the next approach when we do the posterior humerus. Now, the importance of this triangle, it has the circumflex scapular artery, which is a reference to us. The confusing part of this approach is you are not sure of your area. Are you in the infraspinatus? or are you between the infra and the teres minor? The common mistake is you go through the infraspinatus because it, it's multipinate and you go through it and you think you're in the plane, all right? And we're gonna see how not to avoid it. So one important trick is you find the pedicle of the circumflex capillar which has a superficial branch. Simon has showed us once very nicely that. That tells you that you're in between the two teres muscles, okay? And it's always there, it's easy to find. Okay, so that you can do it in prone position, lateral or semi-prone. I prefer the semi-prone or lazy prone position. The arm must be free to get the reduction of the scapula, which might be difficult. Now, for the incision, you have the classic Jude, which you went along the spine of the scapula and along the medial border. Now, this is not necessary. Stefan has told, showed us the advantage of the vertical one, which is the modified Jude. The vertical one, you're, you're fixing the lateral border of the scapula. So you want to get screws from the lateral part. And when you have a big flap, it's very difficult. So the vertical one is much easier, and you can reach everything in the scapula with that. So you don't need to do the L shape. A vertical is very good, and it's enough. So this is our approach from the posterior angle of the acromion to the inferior angle of the scapula, straight line incision. Then, this is the anatomy to show you. So, this is the deltoid. Now, the patient is lying on the side. The head is here. The arm is down there, and the chest is down there. So, deltoid. This is the infraspinatus, teres minor, teres major coming from the inferior part of the scapula, and latissimus comes around the angle, and this is the triceps muscle. Okay, this is the pedicle I'm telling you about with the circumflex scapular. It shows you that you're between the minor and the major once we find this pedicular fat. So this is our plane between the infraspinatus and teres minor. Okay, internervous plane between which nerves? Infraspinatus supplied by what? Suprascapular and teres minor, axillary nerve. Very good. Okay, once you reflect the deltoid, then we start, then you see the plane very well, and you open in between the two muscles 
to see it. Now, this is the axillary. It gives a branch to the teres. Try to see it. it. Gives a branch to the teres minor and then to the deltoid, the, blood su the nerve supply. This is our plane. Here you are on the lateral border of the scapula, inferior glenoid. You can do your reduction and put your plate here. It's actually quite simple. Okay? So, now the thing that we're afraid of here is the suprascapular nerve. Now, this is quite tight and it's quite short. So, a lot of retraction on the infraspinatus is dangerous here. If you need to lift the infraspinatus a lot, if you have a body fracture, a malunion, then you need to do a good release of the infraspinatus, and I'll show you how to do that. So all of you must see the suprascapular nerve also to know what it is. It's quite close to your lateral border fixation. So the main risks are the suprascapular nerve and the axillary nerve, and we talked about the variations from the Jew day to the modified Jew day. Now, of course, you can keep the deltoid, just do abduction, elevate it. I suggest that you do it as a second stage when you have more experience of this approach. In the beginning, lift the deltoid off, be comfortable, do a good operation. You can extend this, detach the infraspinatus, which we will do at the end, and mob mobilize it completely so you have full access. Some people also do a different approach and go between the two teres muscles between the minor and the major, but the risk there is the circumflex scapular is there and it's more complex. I don't advise you to do it, personal view. So I'll just show you the, what we've done and the approach. My shot. Four steps. Okay, so you should all have identified the angle of the scapula and the inferior angle, the posterior angle of the acromion and the inferior angle of the scapula. So we do a long vertical incision, which we prepare. Now the key here is proper dissection to see the planes. When we went in, there was a lot of fat. We need to do sharp dissection with the knife to see the deep fascia and expose we removed some of the fat here a little bit just to clarify the anatomy. We had a lot of fat here. Okay. And when you see open the deep fascia, you will see the margin. I want you to clarify this. You will see the inferior margin of the deltoid above the vertical muscles. So sharp dissection, clear the fascia off, and then the deltoid will be clear. Once the deltoid margin is clear, you can do some blunt dissection to lift it off, okay? Now, as we see here, again, where are we going to go through? So you need to identify your anatomy. This is the infraspinatus. This is the teres minor. We talked about the pedicle, which is here between the major and the minor, all right? Another uh, trick my friend Mahmoud has taught me is, if you're not sure, is this infra, if I'm thinking that this is infra and this is minor, I follow the muscle all the way up to the head of the humerus. If it goes to the head of the humerus, then I'm sure this is the teres minor. If this goes to the shaft of the humerus, then I know this is major, okay? So again, that's the main trick and the main faults in this approach. So what we'll do is we'll come, once you dissected the deltoid, we will do a stitch here. At the deltoid, we feel the spine of the scapula. And we start dissecting the deltoid off the spine. I know you all feel guilty doing this, but it works fine. You need a little bit of cover tissue for repair. Okay? So now that we've done this and we see the plane. 
هيخدي معاه هيحط الريتراكت بتاعه النور مش حلو Okay, so we said this is major. The pedicle is here. We open up the fascia. And I can feel the border of the scapula here. So, and again, as we learned in the course here, sharp the section to lift the muscle off. Now I'm on the bone, board, the bone of the scapula. This is the lateral border of the scapula, and this is where your plate is going to be. Okay, so I'm on the lateral border now. You can clear some of the muscles off. You do your reduction. And now this is the glenoid. كاميرا لا الاناتومي بيلف ايوه رضوان بس كده حاجه شويه ادي So now I can feel the end of the border and it's the glenoid You can also open the posterior capsule and actually feel the glenoid itself Now here it's important to feel also and see the triceps insertion. So we see the triceps coming in in the lower part of the glenoid. Okay, now we'll do this part and then the second step will be to lift the infra, see the suprascapular nerve. So proceed with this part. So you'll do your vertical incision and then dissect the deep fascia properly Take the deltoid off and find the plane. That's the key part. And then go down to the lateral border of the scapula. Thank you. Hello. Okay, yes. All right. Can I have your attention, please, for one minute? Please. Everyone, stop what you're doing. Stop by doing one second. We will continue this. Just want to show you the rest. Okay? So, let's go back uh, quickly. So, this was the deltoid. We've reflected it. We went through the plane between the teres minor and the infraspinatus. Okay? We got the lateral border all to the glenoid. And you opened the joint capsule and above. All of you did that very well. Okay, now. What we're afraid of is the suprascapular nerve which is actually coming out of the notch very close to where you might put your plate. If you need to go inside from the lateral border, you have to expose and, and, and see it. But be careful, it's quite short and under tension, so you cannot just retract here and be comfortable, you will injure it. So you need to do good dissection. First, you can actually see it from the top. You can go, it's easy, very easy to get the infraspinatus away from the top. You look at it from the inside and, and there, this is the actual pedicle there, the suprascapular nerve and vessel, they're coming here through the notch. The artery will be above the notch, but this is the nerve right there. Yes. Okay, focus. There, this part. So they're taking the muscle and this is it through the notch. The other way, if for some reason you need to do body work beside the lateral border, I mean, if you need to fix the lateral border, you just go here and fix it. But if you need to do body work, like the case we showed with malunion, you can easily lift the whole infraspinatus off. And again, you can see the nerve coming in into the muscle right there. So you can see the nerve coming in into the muscle there. 
So you need to see it from both sides. If you're gonna fix, you mobilize a little bit the infraspinatus and see the nerve so you can put your internal fixation. Sometimes you have to bring your plate all the way up here on the posterior part of the glenoid, okay? The other thing I want you to see is the axillary nerve. So we know about the quadrangular space. You will dissect a little bit here, sharp dissection. We have the major. You'll find the triceps, long head of triceps coming in horizontally here. So once you dissect here, the deltoid that's been reflected, you will see the nerve coming into the muscle there. A little bit more, yeah. And the axillary is giving another branch to the teres minor muscle itself. So we have a branch, the main branch going to deltoid, and then a branch to the teres minor. This is the long head of triceps. So, and this is our quadrangular space. And this is the major. So I want you to look at these two before we move on to the posterior approach. Thank you.